Hello everybody, welcome to episode 6 of this Joy of ZZT series. I've been a bit on and off lately due to circumstances, but we're getting back to it. Um, last time we started and got a good way through all the various puzzle designs that I had ideas to show off. We had, let's see, a boulder puzzle, a trivia puzzle, a key puzzle, and then we ended with this thing, this contraption where you move things around, shoot bullets, and hit targets. And normally, I've been purposely avoiding doing any kind of editing not on stream for this world, but towards the very end, we did this, I did this trail out of water, and apparently I guess they didn't do a final test at the end of last stream, because having this all be water broke the puzzle. So I quickly replaced this path with fakes. It broke because uh, these objects can't move onto water, which was kind of screwing things up. And similarly, the little flashing color effect, I changed water to fake in all of this. I figured you didn't want to watch me type all that. Unfortunately, KevEdit does not have a find and replace feature, although if you're ever desperate, it does with Alt-S, let you actually save the object's code to a file, and Alt-O or Alt-I to open or insert, you can just insert a file so you can edit it in something else if you really got to. And there was one more bug which I purposely did not fix on sh off stream because it's something that's very much worth noting. We made our three targets here last, well, I guess it wasn't last week, last episode, and they would send a message when they got shot to hit target to go to hit. And then we have this object here named hit target and hit. And when we go to this label, we'd use zap to make it have to have the label called three times before it would die. And then, you know, to save space, we made all these other doors bind hit target. And that breaks everything. Because as we talked about way back when, when you bind code, it kind of shares, it points to the code, it doesn't copy it. So whenever we send hit target to hit, it would say zap hit. And basically, every single one of these would try and zap hit. It's kind of a mess. Breaks horribly. The solution in this case is simply to just not use bind. So I'm going to put this original name, original objects in my buffer, and I'm going to replace all these other doors. And hopefully now this puzzle as we left off, is playable. So let me uh, test that real quick. Okay, that's a lot better. Now it works. We get our bonus points, and we move on to our next puzzle. So as I was saying, I had two more puzzle types I wanted to show off. Copy that, give him a nice long hallway to walk down. I swear this is not going to be a ping pong path. It really, it really isn't. Oh, also, when we were doing this part here with water, in order to not have this water for shading be affected, we made these objects. Technically, we can turn that back to water now, now that water isn't being 
hit with CCT commands. Similarly, it's very important to make sure that you can't shoot, which I already did have disabled, because now I'm doing this kind of shading within the interior of the board, so if you could shoot through that wall and just keep on walking, that could cause trouble. So for our next puzzle, just warp our player over here. I'll make a nice sort of hallway. Very narrow hallway. Do not question how the shading works. What we're going to do is we're going to make some objects. Make some sliders. And then we're going to make some buttons, which are going to sort of toggle these sliders on and off with each object. So it's going to be one of those puzzles where you have to find a proper way to open everything up. And just like last time, I'm being dumb and winging it. I, haven't, I know how to program one of these, I don't know how to design one of these puzzles. So let's just see what happens. We'll make a couple buttons. I'll conveniently number them so that if the player wants to, they can kind of like write down the effects. Name our object one. And when we touch it, we're going to actually send a message to all of these objects. And different, different objects in that row are going to react differently. So the easiest way for me to do this, I'm going to put all my logic into those sort of doors up top. And all I'm going to do with the buttons themselves, I'm going to use this special ZZT case. If you do the send command with or without typing send and use others for the object name, it will send every single object on the board except for this one to that label, if it has it. So I'm just going to make sure I use a unique label so I don't screw up any earlier code on the board. And I'm going to be consistent and say case one. And that's it. So now there's case two. Uh, let's, let's squish these together a bit. Remember, you can also change character here with just the arrow keys. So if you happen to know that your next character is the next one, you can just cycle through them a lot easier. Others case two. And others case three. I don't know, six seems excessive. I'm just going to go with four. Well, I got a lot. I don't know. Yeah, I'm going to go for six. He's four. And, um, okay, these objects don't actually need names. There's just one more thing I'd have to update. And control Y can delete a line. struggling here. Snorb is pointing out using something like ABXY. Cypher is also pointing, up thing, pointing out issues with ZZT, so there's plenty more to talk about here. Um, I'm going with just 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I know one alternative would be something like color, and I would suggest not doing color just for colorblind players. I've I know there's at least one person still ZZTing who has color blindness. So keep that in mind that some players might not be able to do that sort of puzzle without a lot of extra frustration if you're color coding things. I guess it's probably not going to make a difference in here since you also have like the position, but still. 
And Zypher is mentioning in chat an issue with naming labels with numbers. And that is true. I don't recall the details offhand, but sometimes things like case 1 and case 10 will get screwy. In my case, it's always going to be a single digit number, so I'm, I don't have to worry about that. But if you do a lot of choices and numbers, mixing numbers are dangerous if you're doing a lot of them, but I'm sticking with single digits. This may end up, I may be wrong, and this may all come crashing down on me, and then we'll get some bugs to fix. But for now, I think we're good to start programming these guys. I don't think, I think since we're calling them with others, they don't actually need to have names either. I'm just going to experiment with that. Case 1, we'll just say put south empty. I'm just going to make sure I'm correct here. Jump back to Zeta. Press 1. Okay, so it does work even though that object does not have a name. So we're going to start programming some buttons then. This two. Set it all up. Uh, well, I'm always going to put south. I'm going to save myself some typing here. Is that six of them? Two, three, four, five, six. Yellow slider, north south. I can tell this is probably an incredibly poor way to go through this. And what I can almost certainly predict at this point is that I'm going to drastically reduce the number of objects here. Or I can fudge it and sort of do two sets of four. Actually, yes, I'm going to do that. They won't be in the same order, so this one will be a copy of this one. And I'll scatter it around. I'll wait for that at the end. So I'll effectively double the length of this when it's done. And it'll look a lot scarier than it actually is. Which is a great way to make people feel like they've accomplished something. Also, yeah, he can definitely save space like Azzy's saying. Azzy, shouldn't you be in bed? Instead of criticizing my ZZT oop, you definitely can heavily compress this. But I'm just gonna keep it like this, so. Surrounds. Great. Sure hope I'm making a solvable puzzle here. You could also do some more complex stuff where instead of it just being a, a hard case of putting a slider or putting an empty, you could have it sort of toggle the state with certain buttons. But if I've learned anything in this series, it's that I'm always horribly pressed for time. So if this all works, okay, we'll sort of place these in arbitrary order. I think I did them all. Yellow, yellow, empty. Empty, empty, empty. Empty, yellow, yellow. Yellow, empty, yellow. Okay, those are four different objects. All right, loan of truth. Is this playable? Probably not. 
And if you think I'm bad at designing these, wait until you see me try to solve one. Especially try to solve one quickly. Look, I'm even reflexively saving because I'm in a horrible puzzle. Puzzle. Okay, that looks good. Probably isn't very puzzleable. Yeah, some of these should do nothing. We're getting some fun patterns, though. Let's make this slightly more nuanced. And let's worry about this once we have the other four good. So make two of them just do nothing. Alright, that might be a little better. I'm very close to something solvable. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make it so button 2 also makes door number 3. Put an empty. That should be solvable since we had it. Oh, and I forgot to switch to Kev at it. I just made that one an empty. Now we should definitely have something solvable. Look at that. I don't feel accomplished at all because I just press the buttons arbitrarily. But it works. And we're getting somewhere. I should have wrote down the order I pressed those in so I could write down a solution. Let me try that one more time, and this time with a pencil. One, three, five. Two, four, six. Three, two, this isn't working very well. Three, two, one, five. I'll never solve it again, will I? Five, three, one, two. Okay, that's consistent. Right, one, three, five, two, four, six, three, two, one. Five, three, one, two. Okay, I simplified that. <laughs> uh, never said these puzzles were going to be good puzzles. Five, three, one, two. That's that's still a puzzle. You still have to find out what buttons to press. I'm going to write that down somewhere. In fact, let's see. What are these empty stores we had in Arcade? I mean, for rent. Let's go back here. So we're going to detect when the player walks inside. We're going to make a little invisible object here at cycle one, which is very important because we definitely need it to detect the player. Have a check. We're going to constantly look for contact with the player. Otherwise, have it loop. Reveal. Let 
Meanwhile, in this corner, another invisible object. how you traditionally do. There. Now we got a severe hint for our severely easy puzzle. Look at that. Now we gave the mall some another purpose for this building here. Let's double check that that all works. Didn't. What did I screw up? If contact reveal, paper show. Oh, I think I said paper appear. Paper reveal. There we go. I totally contacted it. It's right here. You have to contact it to walk inside. Although I'm actually gonna move it here so that it's more out of the way of the player walking in. And forgot to change Kev at it one more time. Beautiful. And one last thing. I will Tell it to disappear once it does its job. And by disappear, I mean die. And I will make this thing take a moment to appear. So there we go. Now our mall board is slightly more complete. Our puzzle board is more complete than ever. And I've got one last puzzle type that I want to show off, but I do not have enough room on this board. There's a very tiny space. So we're going to play. We're going to do that foreshadowing thing. Move our purple key to here. And just like way back at the crash meteorite, the player's going to see a purple key before they can get it. I'm just going to add another board. some room here. There we go, now our purposeful screw up in this corner is even more hidden. Alright, so let's add one more board. Additional puzzle. And we'll use star to link them. Do this. Copy and paste and line up our exits. Okay. Actually, I'm going to do a different style. Let's do some green. Yeah, let's use some of these line walls we've been completely neglecting. Just like way back when, on our killer robot board, we're going to grab a red, green, and blue key. Technically, the player can do a lot of walking back and forth. Oop, got to remember to shut off default colors with D. And now our doors will match the colors we pick. Red, green, and blue.
didn't intend to do that with these line walls, but I think I'm going to make do that on purpose, but later. Okay. Round off this room, square off this room. And our next challenge is going to be stolen straight out of City of CZT. We're going to just have some buttons that open and close some doors. So it's going to be kind of like this one. But this structure will let us make it a little more action oriented. So I'm going to make a couple enclosures. Square them off to begin with. Just like before. Let's see, I want to be a good character for this. Oh, you can do a pair. Okay, one. Open. Two steps north. Switch to the other character here. Gate two, two steps south. When it gets opened, gate three. This one's going to have to be a little bit something. Gonna want to do sort of adding a couple of gates scattered around. I have room for these gates to move. Well, the only problem, I like how these look, but there's not a good way to translate that to a vertical format. I guess we'll just have to settle. Good enough. Let's see, gate one. So we have gates one, two, and three. Could use V and a carrot. But I also limited myself on room. I'm just going to use this percent sign. Call this one gate two. Did I really? I don't know why I did opens and not closes on all of these. I gotta do a whole bunch of copying and pasting. That's that one. That's that one. This one goes that way. Did 
Did I put one in the percent? I didn't even put one in the percent when I realized it. South, so north, west. North, east. North, east, west, south. West, south. Northeast. East, north, southwest. I didn't really pay attention to these names. Ones, twos, twos, three. All right, this seems like a, a reasonable base. some big buttons to try and make stand out here. Gate one open. Gate three. Uh, I should have made that a toggle, actually, not an open and close. Uh, I'm screwing this one up. Let's just see what, what we get when we start like this. That opens up a couple. So you'll be able to get in here and do whatever. This one. We have a button. Let's see, gate two. Oh, I don't want these to be the same. This one will be our three. This one will be a two. This one will also be a two. Sure. This one, gate three open. Yeah, I'm doing this one very poorly, actually. Here's what I'm going to do. Again, I forgot to switch the cabinet up. I need, like, an alarm when that happens. Here's what I'm going to do. Let's play City of ZZT for a minute here and see what this puzzle is supposed to look like if a competent person designs it. Grab some ammo. See, this is why you gotta line up your board exits. Can't go south here. Can't go south here. You can go south here. We're gonna make our way to Dr. Bob's hideout. Fortunately, you can really speed up this board if you skip all the gems, even though you need gems to beat the game. Ouch. Yeah, this is what a competent person's puzzle looks like. There's a lot of doors and buttons, and you press the buttons, and it makes a good sound effect. And there's even this one, which like demonstrates that you can touch these things multiple times, because as soon as you touch it, you're trapped. So you have to touch it again. And so, a much better way to do this is something like this. And you get the benefit of putting sort of creatures in these little rooms. So there's also this element of danger to it, in addition to just figuring out how to navigate the board. And then there's a use of keys. I do 
not have a lot of ammo. Okay, but I just opened up the ammo. See, look at this. You get something that's actually fun and not the mess that I was doing. And it's even further incorporated by the fact that you can block off the exit, so even when you get through the puzzle, you still have to make sure you have a way back. Plus this sort of optional room where it's just some gems. This is a well thought out and good board that was not made in five minutes for a live stream. Let's see. I need to get somewhere else. What do we got? That opens up that. Still got a whole nother button to press. There we go. See, now we can get the key, but we can't get to the door. It's thoughtful. It's good. I like this board a lot. And as you can see, everything's a toggle, and not a weird open-close thing like I was doing by mistake. Now we're almost done here. I need to open up the exit. Or, well, the exit and... yeah, that opens up that. And the actual exit. I need to open up the key and the exit. You can only really do one at a time. Get a reward. Talk to Dr. Bob, who gives us a secret. The infinite wisdom of Dr. Bob. So, this is a lot better than what I had going. So, what we're going to actually do is I'm going to take a look at this in the editor, and we'll just go through its code. Oh man, I have buttons that I probably shouldn't have. Still can't get out of here. There we go. Anyways, long story short, I can reach the exit. Let's go back to Kev Edit. Let's look at this mess. Um, it's, I'm just going to hit Z. You know, just nuke that. Pretend that didn't happen. Let's take a look at City. Where was it? Dr. Bob's hideout. There we go. Okay. Hang on one moment. Alright, so doing this properly, for one thing it takes up a lot of space, as you can tell. These are still some very tiny rooms. There's... let's see. So we hit our button. We lock, so you can't spam the button. We have Bob play the sound effects, so the music doesn't double up, I guess? I don't think that matters. I guess it's just to not put the music in every single object. We zap touch because this is a toggle. And then we send this object called A2 to do east, which is what do means here. And we wait a bit to unlock to make sure that we have time for those doors to move. Next time we touch it, again, we lock, sell Bob music, we restore touch, so that it goes back to this one for the next time. And we tell it to go due west. So let's see, so A2, we had a couple of those. 
all it is is it just moves a couple steps. So there's not a whole lot to this puzzle. The fun of this one is that, you know, you get to use other objects, other enemies, to keep the player from just puzzle solving. And all these other buttons are going to be very similar to the point where they can copy code. Here's one. Same thing. Sends A1. This one sends A5. These need a bit more planning. Look, look, it's a DOS label. And you can also see too that we have some of these that aren't even related to rooms like these ones here. So there's a lot you can do with this concept if you, you know, put the time into it. And you know, I even said, I said going into the last one that I am making these puzzles extremely quickly and you'd be much better off not doing 10 tiny puzzles but like one or two well thought out good puzzles so you don't end up with situations where you think you have to press 20 buttons and then you realize you only need to press 4 over here or that sort of thing or you know trivia where the answer to every question is the third option just so you can remember it. I'm gonna actually just ignore this board I think you get the idea from City, and that's a very quick resource, a quick thing to look at. And just mess around with this a little bit. Fill in our pattern again. And no one will ever know of my shame here. So we do lose out having the going between multiple boards before they get the key. But they get their dang key. And we'll give them some more gems, because you can always use more gems. I'm copying and pasting so I don't have to go pick colors again. All right, so I'm going to say that's a purple keyboard down. Technically that finishes what I wanted to do in less than an hour, but I figured this one would have plenty of spare time because it didn't have a lot more that I wanted to do. So there's still going to be more to it. What I'm going to do now is first I wanted to see if we can make a better exit, and I think a good way to do that is uh, pick some a nice color here. I'll put a transporter to the west, and it is critically important that the tile is immediately blocked. Otherwise, the player will just go through and get put here and be in this weird target area. I'll make this wall extra thick to match. Maybe I'll fill this in. No, I won't fill it in. And then I can put another transporter here. Other ends. To the east. So this will let them go back and forth, but of course, as this is set up right now, they can also just, you know, answer the trivia questions here and just jump right to the key. So we need to do something about that. There's a very easy solution there. And that is a slider. Let's get rid of the background color on it. Put the slider here. There we go. Oh no, actually that doesn't work. Because you can actually push sliders through transporters. So what we need to do instead is one more transporter. And give it the proper colors. There we go. So now they'll be able to exit, but they won't be able to go in through this way. And we should have a fully functional puzzle. 
we've tested all the individual components and no, we can do a full playthrough of it later. I mean, they're very isolated puzzles. You're not going to break one to another. So I think we've got a board. Yeah, put the player back here. It doesn't really matter, because as long as we don't start on this board, they're always going to walk onto it from here. But I like to keep things tidy like that. So that is indeed our fourth purple key. Let's go back. Let's do some cleanup because we've got these notes on the title screen. We've got our symbols here. I forget. When we were making these match our purple key sources. This was the robot factory. This is... I don't know what that is. Where are our other purple keys? There's the scrap. There's the robot factory. Is that three? No. Four is the park. Four is the meteor one. So we want to make these things match where we get them. So these should be centipedes. That's the order we added them in. So robot factory, meteor crash in the park, the mall. Should I have one of these and one robot. It's the mall, and then the puzzle room. And I have no idea. What, oh, I guess the only iconography here is our quiz fish. So we'll use that character once I find the board again. There we go. Top part. Those fish. Yeah, we'll use alternating colors. Nope. Purple on red. So we've got just one more purple key to go. And then the mysterious button at the top. Or orb. We made it an orb, didn't we? I guess we didn't name it anything. Okay, so we go all the way back to the title screen, way back in like the first episode. We had some notes on our robot factory. It was noisy. Some of our robots were too dang smart, and we had more gems than we'd like. So let's address those. First and foremost is the noise. And the noise pro issue was coming from these duplicators. And they're always going to make noise. And so the only real alternatives there are to mask it and mute all sound. We can have an object basically play rests. And that'll basically overwrite any of ZZT's default sound effects with nothingness. And that'll work. But then we don't get the fun little bouncing of these ricochets, and there will be no sound effects for shooting or being shot. So I'd rather keep these, or alternatively, we can have an objects do the duplicating instead. And not really a good way to do that. I mean, there is. We can we can put lions with objects easy enough, but then we don't get custom intelligence values, and they're also going to be forced to be red because you can't normally specify colors. So I don't think we have a good solution to that. We have to decompile ZZT into Turbo Pascal and edit out the duplicator noise. It's the only solution, sorry. But Unfortunately, I don't think there's a good way to solve that one, honestly, without compromising other aspects of either the audio or the game itself. What we can do, though, is definitely clean up this giant mess of gems. That's definitely a lot. And we put so many gems there at first because we were avoiding objects. So each one of these is a dozen, roughly. This one's a little more. So I'm going to just erase these. I 
and we will have a bag of loot here. Now this should be comparatively simple stuff. I'll make it dark green since so much of the enemies here are bright and stand out. Make it a dollar sign if you want to be blatant. You can make it like a treasure chest with like a brown square. Uh, the Energizer character here is a popular chest character as well. Or the, the small block, half block. There's a lot of good ways of doing chests and boxes if that's your thing. I'm just going to go straight to the point. Funny. Simple enough. And there's something I said about their intelligence. Robots on the left have too high intelligence. Okay. Well, that's easy enough. You can just tone it down a little bit here. Like a one above average. I do recall they were all getting very bunched up by the time the player got to this point. I imagine these are the same. Yeah. We could slow the duplicator more, and that'll technically quiet things down by just having them be less active. Let's see what that looks like. Let's really slow them down. Right, let's try playing this board. Let's, there we go. We want that ammo to start with. Let's go back and return to the robot factory. Now those lines there are still at the high intelligence value because I forgot to change it, but I definitely like it there. Even these ones here, you can see they're still very bunched up. Granted they don't have a lot of options for movement. I forgot my boulder, as is tradition. Okay, at the same time now, I'm also like not a fan of this constant bouncing. It is getting a little annoying at this point. So you know what? I think we will try masking the duplicator sound. Oh, this is this is a lot of robots, actually. Wow. Why did I think this was... Well, I guess because you can crush them with all the boxes. Whoops. Yeah, this is... Standards have risen since episode one, let me tell you. Also, I might have soft locked it by doing this. No, but I came close. So, yeah, let's adjust that. Um, also, you'll notice that this transporter moved. I missed that. That's just a fun ZZT bug that nobody knew about until like a year ago. In this case, it's completely harmless, since all it did was move a transporter and it still works, but that's a fun thing to worry about. Dang it. 
there we go. One other thing to consider too is by replacing all those gems with a bag of money, that the player did not get health back. So that's something to also deal with. Let's handle that first and foremost. We are going to make some quiet audio. Let's put this in the corner, blend it into the surroundings. Make a cycle one. Silencer. So I actually asked Azzy about this the other day, since we have that whole ZZT source code thing now, which makes it very easy to get answers to these sorts of questions, which is a lot of ZZT games would do something like this, and that basically plays silence and would overwrite the duplicator noise, but it also keeps filling the buffer because nobody really knew how long the buffer was or how long it takes to play a note. So I guess now's a good time to test what he said. I forget if it was 16th. I think it was 16th. So I think if we play a 16th of a rest, that should like smoothly silence things. Let's just add in pause to test that later. So if I'm correct, we'll get silence through all this. And I'm going to go back to this object here. Silencer. Pause the silencer. Just to err on the side of caution, and we'll have it idle a single tick. Which also means I want to lock the object so the player can't keep touching it for gems. And then I will play... Let's see. Coin, money, cash. That's a that's a nasty sounding one, but sure. And if I am correct, I'll move the player here. We should get a silent board, and touching this should still let us hear this music close to immediately, without having like a giant buffer of silence to get through first before it plays. So let's see. Listen closely. Okay, we've got the silence part down. Let's see. I think that did it. Did that? Yeah, maybe not quite. That definitely had more than two notes. Let me just do... That's a pretty straightforward sound. Let's try and see what that sounds like. Mm. So I th don't think it quite matches perfectly. Add one more idle, see if that makes it a bit more smooth. That seemed like dead on. Oh my goodness. Let me pause the ECT there since I didn't tell it to re silence everything. Okay. Player music. And we'll resilence. Actually, just to make it clear, we should get a single note. This will let us know if I'm missing anything. Nope, we got our note, so we're good. I don't know why I said nope when I should have said yep, it's good. Works great. Not quite, actually. Why did that? Wait, what? Oh, I guess it still took a while for the buffer to kick back in? We were definitely getting some bouncing noises. Hang on. That was weird. 
But it definitely got quiet again at some point. That's even more bizarre. It gets quiet once the duplicator sound effect plays. I have no idea. That's going to be a question for Azzy. I'm going to go with not worrying about it for the time being. Still, do we get some, get some music? Silencer eventually kicks in and is weird. But I guess that works. And even these are still very, very fast. Playing this board, there's going to be a lot of these dudes. So what I'm going to do... Is... Weighing my options here. Could just drop it down to one. See, if their intelligence was lower, I could just do something like this and let them kind of wander aimlessly, so sometimes they duplicate and sometimes they wouldn't, since they'd have to be over this spot before the duplicator activates. That'll probably work out. Well... Yeah, I was going to run with that. You can see what that looks like again later. Let's do one last quick run through. Go over to here. Grab some scrap metal for the mall. Just get destroyed because I'm in a hurry at this point. Yeah, that might be a good idea to actually let it fill up naturally instead of having all those pre-placed ones. Also, honestly, I'm not a fan of the silence technique. As annoying as that gets with it on, it, it feels so weird. Not having any sound when you shoot or hurt things or get hurt by things. I think that one comes down to a personal preference. Yeah, it's... I'm probably going to get rid of that silencer after this. Yeah, there's still a lot. That's what it really is. It's not the duplicators. It's just so many to begin with. So I'm going to quit out. Back to Kev at it. going to re... Make these guys go. Let's cut it down. Cut down our lion count. Okay. Ignore our silencer. I'll leave it in place in the unlikely event I change my mind. Just having it here won't do anything. It's just going to immediately halt its code. And that the dollar sign that we pick up is just going to tell it to jump to pause and halt its code immediately again. So that's not an issue. Yeah, not having like noise when you pick up keys, that's that's a crime. Actually, no, I know what we're going to do. We're going to put some optional earplugs. Make them a bit more prominent. Let's see, how do you make earplugs in ZZT? I would have to say a quote. 
is a good character for those. Earplugs. Semicolon would be probably my second choice. Again, we don't need to do an optional label. Always have fun with it. There we go. Make sure this is cycle one, so it kicks in immediately. So now, if you're not a fan of the noise, you can put in some earplugs. Now, if you actually really want to go all out, technically you could have objects check when these keys disappear by looking for if any green key, and then actually play the key sound manually and then resume the silence. That actually sounds kind of fun. But I'm just gonna stick with these earplugs for now. And my only other complaint is that you can't turn them off once they're in. Oh well. In fact, As long as we're here, now I could, you know, just use this on other boards that are noisy. But yeah, yeah, Snorf, Snorf's thinking the same way as me, which is technically speaking, the player has these earplugs. And while it would be fun to really go all out and have NPCs and stuff react differently, and you absolutely could do that. There's nothing stopping you. Other than, I don't have time for that, and in reality, I just think it might be fun to make a reference at like the end of the game where you like drop your earplugs or something. But that's always something fun to do. Let me make sure that this does indeed work. There's no reason it shouldn't. It's very straightforward in code. There we go. Oh, I forgot to make them disappear, actually. Why did this... What? Okay, so you put them on, and it sends the silencer to silence, but this is just an empty label. And then it makes noise again. I've got questions. It's great finding weird ZZT behavior just in the middle of a stream. That's very weird. I'm actually curious now, because I bet if I just do this, it won't. Let's see. I am so glad we can figure all this junk out now. So. Yes. Is it just that they sometimes... Yeah, the CZT audio is a mess, and there's a reason nobody knows how any of it works. Similarly, I still don't trust this, even though that timing is supposed to be good. But now that I have this as like an optional thing, I'm not too worried. 
about doing this whole pausing thing. In fact, if not earplugs. There we go. I have a lot of questions. Many, many questions. But, ah, I did it yet again. Noise, noise, noise. Continued noise. Put them on. There we go. The last thing I want to do. Is, I don't know. The only thing I'm worried about with this is that since it's like in universe, I think everybody is going to touch the pair of earplugs and be like, well, I need to wear the earplugs or else I'll get a game over later. So I do need to do something to make it clear that this is like. Ah, I can't spell. Sounds of. I have that'll do. Got the earplugs, earplugs and puzzles. No longer noisy. Intelligence is better. Replace with an object. Notes. Park slash meteorite needs a better way back. Let's see. Martian Park. Which took us to here. Could just do like another sort of transporter setup like I did on the puzzle board. I'd kind of like it to be something a little different. So let's try back to the park. Do something like this. So you get your purple key, which you mean you have to burn on this purple door, but you mean you get another purple key, so it's all good. This passage don't want you to... I'm actually going to get rid of this passage. If there's no passage on a board, when you take this passage that goes to this one, it will just put the player wherever the player was last on this board, which is going to be here in the corner. Let's do that. Even better. So this is the fun part of ZZT, where you make paper towel dispensers, because the bathroom now has some extra space in it. Blocked, random, perpendicular, random, northeast. I swear to God, this is valid. Then, let's 
See, ZZT can be very therapeutic when you make paper towel dispensers that have a 25% chance of giving you a paper towel. So again, because this is a horrible mess of a direction, this means random perpendicular to this, which is a random direction north or east. So it'll pick one of these, and it'll pick a direction randomly perpendicular to it. So effectively, you get a one in four chance. Well, you get, sorry, you get four possibilities. But we have it in a corner, so these two are blocked, and the player is going to be touching it, so one of these will also be blocked, so there's only going to be one free space. So this effectively gives us that 25% chance odds. And also, I'm going to have it put seek, because that way it always puts the gem in the direction of the player, since they're going to be adjacent. There we go. <sighs> ZZT, everybody. And let's do... We'll do a passage here. Part of me would love to make, like, another board to this segment to get back. But I do want to move along. So let's see, where am I going to drop them out? Right, this will this will create some intrigue. Actually, you know what? Whoa. Wrong button there. We'll make it really intriguing. We're gonna immediately burn that purple key. They won't even know necessarily. Unless they were out here and they're like, how do I get this purple key? And the answer is this weird passageway through the park. I guess there's no harm in making this two ways, even though it doesn't need to be. So let's use a white passage here to the park. Go back to the park. And we'll do a white passage here to outside of the mall. There we go. And I guess I will fill this. That'll do. Okay. What's left in our notes? Park's got a better way back. Mall. Scrap shop owner needs to not let you ask about the purple key after you've gotten it. So that's an easy one as well. Go back to the mall itself. Here's our scrap shop owner. like this. Back to here, when you ask him about the purple key. Actually here, we're going to do some slight rearranging of code here. I'm going to make this option first to check if we have any scrap to sell. And then we're going to do this. If not any purple key, so if there isn't a purple key on the board, and then what that will do is that will just hide this option if that condition is true. Otherwise, it'll keep on processing and it'll let the player ask about the purple key. And let's make sure that I am correct, because I have been wrong many times tonight. Okay, this guy's talks about selling junk. Ask about the purple key. Um, I forget what flag I use because it's been so long. Oh, this is a debug object. Oh. I thought that was the robot itself for a moment. There we go. Robot saved. Talk to our robot. Robot hooks us up. Technically speaking, 
we can still ask about the purple key in this current state. That is a... We don't have the budget. QA can report this bug. Well, we don't have the budget to fix it. We're shipping like this. Oh, actually, now this raises its own issue, which is... If we don't have any scrap to sell... Then it, this is kind of not good. Oh, we put a passage. I did it again, except this time I had Kev edit up instead of ZZT. That's a first. Okay, over in ZZT, we end up getting this, which isn't all that much better than having the purple key option, because now there's just no text. So we're going to change that again. I'm going to instead... Back to Kev at it. Show Snorb what I was talking about, which is way back in the Martian Park. When you get back from the park, you get back through this passage here. So you go up north, go to the meteorite board and get the purple key that you saw. Then you head back down here, open the purple door, think, dang, I don't have a purple key anymore. Go through this passage, to outside of the mall and get a purple key. Oh, this is what you're talking about. That I forgot I was going to code an object so you can actually exit this part once you go into it. Actually. I see what you're saying. Uh, I don't want this passage to not be in like an awkward spot. I'll do it like that. Do this. Hidden objects. First, we have to check if we're blocked to the north. If we are, then we open up. If we're not, we do nothing. So actually, one other thing. I do want to make sure that I remember my passage behavior correctly. I believe with that, the colors 100% matter. So I'm going to start from this board. Go back to here. Okay, yes, so we do still start in the bathroom. Then we got our key. And then we get out of here. Get out. Purple key acquired. Okay. So last thing is to fix that last mall issue. I'm gonna do it this way. If not any purple key, alt. So instead, when we touch, we'll immediately check for the purple key. If it's still there, then we get this dialog. Otherwise, you can do it this way. Go to alts. Copy and paste our text. Actually, yeah, let's use the exact same label and imply that the player is trying to buy the robot as well. And we'll still get the generic not for sale message. So there we go. So now we'll have that working. One last test. Get our key from them. About that 
cool robot. Not for sale. Looks good. So I'm doing some more debugging here in the small. Looks like we don't need this anymore. Was this a debug object? This was a debug for testing the rejuvenation chamber. Make this look a little more visually interesting if it's going to be an abandoned shop. Oh, I guess I won't do a tile floor, I'll just do some dust in the corner. There we go. Oh my god, I did it again, I did it again, I did it again. What it really is, is that I have my Twitch preview pause, so I look over to the right and I see a big pause Twitch window, and not my OBS window, which shows me what I'm displaying. And I should really do something about that instead. Next time. Anyway. <laughs> now there's some fake walls for dust in here. I believe that empties out our notes. Cool. And it's been an hour and 40. So I think we're good to call it a night. We got some stuff done here. We coded earplugs. Probably the first ever pair in ZZT. Feel free to prove me wrong. I did some adjusting to this board. Found Lord knows what happening with some music and silence. We added an alternate exit to the park, and a paper towel dispenser. Add this exit here in the mall. Handled this case where this guy was still talking about the purple key, even though the purple key was gone. And we did one new puzzle type and abandon the other after seeing a much better version in City to reference instead. Oh, we also added a hint for it too back in the mall. I think that covers everything. Um, if anybody's got any other questions, last minute things to bring up, go right ahead. Otherwise, I think we're going to call it a night. All right, so I think, I th well, probably won't be the last, but we're very much getting to the end of this. We've got one purple key left. Other than cleaning up the title screen, I'd still like to do that at some point. Do we just got that last purple key? I already kind of know what we're going to be doing for that. And then it's just a matter of coding an ending, and then we'll have a completed game, start to finish. We'll do our final testing, and I would also, I don't know if I'll do a video, I'll probably just do an article because it would be much better to have it written down, but something on how to actually publish a ZZT game. I mean, obviously the easy thing is just put it in a zip file and throw it up on the museum, but I would also like to show how to use Zeta's web, brow web browser, web player, so people can publish their games on itch or a personal website or anything like that and basically get some ZZT games out there that aren't just isolated on the museum. So that'll be all for now. So we will be back probably next week. We shall see. Needless to say, it's hectic times, but that's the game plan for now. Thank you all for watching. And hopefully we've we've learned something tonight. I'll see you all next time. Later.